Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success, an online free educational institute. So we are continuing with the WBCS series and today's topic of discussion is how to read Indian constitution and some important articles of Indian constitution. So we have divided this video in two parts. In the part one we will be talking about articles which are below 175 and in the next part which, are, which we are going to upload there we will be talking about articles beyond 175 up to 3. 75 just a minute so this video is mainly made for WBCS aspirants but still if you are preparing for any other SPSC examinations like uh, state civil service examination or central government recruitment examination this video is going to help you and I can assure you if you go through our videos you will be learning 100% of the things but the main thing is you have to see our videos, you have to watch our videos several times because so many information will be hidden each and everything I am telling here would be information and that would be going to help you in your recruitment examination so before starting let me tell something about myself so I am Shishan Mitro, a research scholar of Indian Institute of Technology Guwahati and those are my email IDs if you have any queries you can write me email and we will be happy to reply to your queries and also you can start chatting in the below comment section you start writing comments you ask questions and anybody can answer these questions so we will make a platform where actually we can interact and we can make our preparation well so that is the main motive of this channel this institution so now let me carry forward so this is the Indian constitution, I have downloaded it from Ministry of Law and Justice several times, I am telling you the same thing. If you want to know something, if you want to see some legal document, the authenticated website is government website and Ministry of Law and Justice that uploads many things and one more source is there, you, if you write in Google, uh, that is the Indian Gazette they publish the things which are, which are going on in parliament and uh, so in some other supreme courts, high courts so everything you will be getting from that gazette of India and for state level also you have gazette, official gazette and that is the info source of information ok so the main idea of making this video is to teach you how to read Indian constitution so whenever you read Indian constitution there are few things you should remember. The first and foremost thing is Indian constitution is written in very tough English. So this is a challenge uh, if you are not good in English then it would be uh, difficult it, it would be difficult to understand constitution from the very book of Indian constitution. So what are the solutions of that? The main solution is you have to read this constitution properly, you have to go through the lines several times and even though if you even if, if you do not understand then there are many websites, many videos like I am making a video, you can consult those videos, those websites, they will be explaining you the article, what is exactly the article meant, things will be explained in many of the sources. So, you go through this authenticated sources like our channel if you consult our channel we will be uploading videos where we will be explaining each and every article ok so thereby you will be understanding things and slowly slowly you can understand many things and after that you will be able to read Indian constitution from the constitution itself you will be able to understand the articles and meanwhile if you are not good in English then the main option is you have to be good in English and how will you do that? For that you have to read newspaper, you have to go through English books, you have to read uh, poems, poetry and story books. At the same time you have to go you have to listen to the cricket commentary, you have to listen to English news and everything uh, you have to do and uh, those are the main ways how you have you can learn English ok so let me show you something so as I have told all, as I have already told you there are 
22 parts of Indian constitution and there are 12 schedules of Indian constitution. So, like a book has many chapters, in constitution also we have 22 parts, okay. Here chapter means, here part means a chapter type and also there are separate 12 schedules of Indian constitution and all the things are important. All the things are your guidelines, your law. Constitution is nothing but, but the prime law book of India. Then, once you know all those things, and those are, uh, we have 22 parts, 12 schedules. Once you are aware of these things, then you have to go through the articles. Initially, you don't read the entire article, okay. Initially, what you can do? You can just read the headline, that means the main things of that particular article. Suppose those are the outlines of the articles. What is there in article 1, article 2, article 3. The, the entire thing is not given here. It is only the headlines, only the outline. So initially you start reading these things. Because initially if you go through the entire article, you will not be able to understand anything. That is why it is my recommendation that you do not go through the article if you are if you are just starting if you are just starting it. When you are comfortable in reading articles, then you go through the entire article. So, like uh, I'll talk about part three initially. Say part three. Just a minute, let me go to part 3 of Indian Constitution that talks about fundamental rights. Yeah, here is the part 3. So, initially what you need to know, you need to know how many articles are there. As I have already told you, from article 12 to article 35, this many articles talk about fundamental rights. So, if you go through one by one, 12 to 35, you will understand what are the fundamental rights we have. Our constitution is providing us these fundamental rights. So, article 12, for example, talks about the definition of state. What is the definition of state that gives, the, that is written in article 12. Then article 13, it talks about laws which is inconsistent or in derogation of fundamental rights. What does it mean? It means, suppose there are, there will be many laws before the commencement of this constitution. But now we have our own constitution, so any previous law which violates this constitution, the fundamental rights of this constitution would be null and void. So those laws which are violating the fundamental rights, would not have any existence. That is the main thing of Article 13. So you have to understand the things what is exactly written in this article. Merely just reading and going through the articles uh, is not enough. You have to understand the basic thing. And I am here to explain the same. Then your Article 14 to Article 18 that talks about right to equality. Now, equality means we are all equal. By law, all the people of India, all the citizens of India are equal. So we have this equality. Article 14 tells equality before law. That is very simple thing, everybody can understand. Article 15 very important. Prohibition of discrimination on grounds of religion, race, caste, sex or place of birth. That means you cannot discriminate people, you cannot tell a people that you are a black man, you cannot tell a people that you are a scheduled caste, that is, that is not allowed. So never tell this kind of things. Our constitution, article 15, is telling us that everybody is equal on grounds of these things, religion, race, caste, sex or place of birth. Okay, then article 16, it talks about Equal opportunity in matters of public employment. What does it mean? It means you have to give equal opportunity to all the people. If you are the employer, then you cannot discriminate. 
you have to give equal opportunity to all the people, all the citizens of India. But there are few provisions where you can make special provision for a scheduled tribe, scheduled caste, or for uh, women, for, the, for their development. And also you can make provision that few of the employment you can only generate for your state or for your districts, like that provisions are there. But whatever you are doing, you have to obey these articles, that is the Article 16 of Indian Constitution. Article 17 talks about abolition of untouchability, Article 18 talks about abolition of titles. So in detail I will be explaining in some other video, but uh, here the main purpose is to, to make you aware of Indian Constitution, to make you understand what are the articles important, I, am, I have already tabulated a few of them. Those articles are very much important and you have to know the basic things of this article for your preliminary examination. You have to know the outlines only. That is the, what is there in these articles. You don't need to go through all the articles in detail. Okay, so first article which I have tabulated is article 12. I have already mentioned article 12, yeah, article 12 gives the definition of state, article 13 tells that laws which are inconsistent or in derogation would be null and void, article 14 to 32 or all these articles actually for 12 to 35 exactly not 32, it talks about, these articles talk about fundamental rights as I have shown here. Like I talked, I, to, I told you up to Article 18, that is uh, right to equality, and then you have right to freedom. You have freedom of speech, that is guaranteed by Article 19. You have uh, Article 20, that tells you protection in respect of conviction or for offences. Article 21 talks about protection of life and personal liberty. That article is a matter of controversy. I will tell some in some other video. Article 21A that talks about right to education. Now why there is uh, A? Because that article was not there uh, 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 or it was not there initially. Later on we added this article by some amendment and this amendment is 86 constitutional amendment that happened in the year 1993. That is why this 21 clause A. Article 22 tells protection against arrest and detention in certain cases. All the articles I will be explaining you in some other video that will be made on fundamental rights. Then you have right against exploitation. You cannot exploit any people. You cannot violate the human rights of any people. That is written in these two article, articles. And those are prohibition of traffic in human being and forced labor, that is, uh, you cannot force anybody to do certain job if he or she is not interested. Prohibition of employment of children in factories, it is, uh, it is telling actually, if anybody is below 14, then you cannot force him to do work in factory or other workplaces. Then you have right to freedom of religion, as you all know, India is a secular country where we can practice any religion, we don't have any uh, obstacle, any restriction to, to preach and that is granted by our Indian constitution and that is from article 25 to 28. Article 25 says freedom of conscience and free profession, practice and propagation of religion. That means you can propagate your religion, you can preach, you can convert people uh, from some other religion to your religion, all the things are allowed freedom to manage religious affairs that is guaranteed by article 26 article 27 talks about freedom as to payment of taxes for promotion of any particular religion so you can promote your religion you can put money to that in order to promote your religion that all the things are allowed article 28 tells you about freedom as to attendance at religious instruction or religious worship in certain educational institutions. So this article I will be explaining you in fundamental rights but 
for the time being you understand article 25 to article 28 give you freedom of religion and then you have cultural and educational rights granted by article 29 to 30, 30. and then you have certain laws that is guaranteed by article 31 a b c and d then uh, you have article 32 uh, it was called heart and soul of indian constitution by the framer of constitution that is dr bhimrao ramjee amdedkar he told he considered this article as heart and soul of indian constitution because this tells you about the remedy if you are not given with fundamental rights then you can go to high court you can go to supreme court and you can file petition and uh, uh, your supreme court is bound to hear your case your petition so that is guaranteed by article 32 i have already made a separate video on that if you are interested enough you can uh, go through that video okay so then you have part 4 that is directive principle of state policy we have made another video on that you can go through okay now the main thing is to tell you about these many articles the basic things the important articles so here 13 14 to 32 i have already mentioned article 52 talks about president of india so article 52 tells you that there will be uh, president of India, then article 53 that tells you about the executive power of the union. So this article talks you about executive power of union. What would be the executive power of India that is written in this article. Then you have article 54 that talks about your election of president. That is election of president. It is given in article 54. Then your article 58 that talks you about qualification for election as president. What would be the qualification for becoming a president? So that is given in article 58. Very much important. You can go through article 58 and you can have the uh, required qualification for a president. That uh, it is important. That's why I am telling in detail. So for becoming a president, he or she should be a citizen of India. He has completed an age of 35 years, that is the age requirement is 35. Age is 35 for president. That is important, you should remember it. And one more thing is there, he or she should be qualified enough for election as a member of the house of the people. If you are qualified, for becoming a member of the house of the people then only you are allowed to become a president one more thing a person shall not be eligible for election as president if he holds any office of profit under the government of india or government of any state or under any local or other authority subject to the control of any of the said government that means you can, if you are becoming a president, then you can only hold the office of president. Any other office under any state government or a central government or any other authorities, you cannot hold it. So that is the main part. Then you have Article 60. Article 60 talks about oath and affirmation of president. Now, there are two terms. One is oath and second one is affirmation. Now what are the difference between these two, you, you should know that. Oath means if you are saying anything in the name of God, that is called oath. But suppose you do not believe in God, then why do you require, why do you say something in the name of God? You would not say because you don't believe in God, then whatever you do, that is called affirmation. That is why two words are there, one is oath, another is affirmation. Then you have article 61 that talks about impeachment of president, the procedure of impeachment of president. That means president can also be impeached. Impeach matlab usko bhi hum log office ke bahar nikal sakte hai. So we have certain provisions by which we can impeach president. 
Now, uh, how do we impeach president? That we will be talking in some other video. Okay, so going to article 63. Article 63 is related to vice president. That means there should be another VP, vice president, vice president of India. Article 64 talks about, it says, vice president should be ex officio chairman of the Rajya Sabha, that is the upper house of the parliament. So the constitution is giving you the provision that whoever becomes the vice president of India, he has to hold the post of chairman of Rajya Sabha. It is given by this article. Then you have article 66, election of vice president. So how do we elect our vice president? Okay, in case of election of president, this is an indirect election. For both the elections are indirect. If you are uh, electing your president, you have to go through indirect procedure and same for your vice president. But in case of president, MP and MLA both vote, both both cast vote. But in case of vice president, uh, this is only the MPs who vote. MLA do not MLAs do not have any power to vote in case of vice president election. Okay, then Article 72 of Indian Constitution, another important article, it gives the power of it gives the power to president to grant pardon or accept or to suspend, remit or commute sentences in certain cases. So, uh, in sim simply you have to know that Article 72 gives the president power of pardon, pardoning power. So, uh, for the time being, you just uh, remember that Article 72 talks about the pardoning power of the President. Then you have Article 73. Article 73 talks about extent of executive power of the Union. You can write down whatever I am telling. You just note all the articles and write it down. Article 73 talks about extent of executive power of the Union. Then you have Article 74, another important article, Council of Minister to aid and advise President. That means, uh, by the constitution of India, president is the head of the state, but we will have council of ministers in order to aid president, to help president, to assist president. So, that is guaranteed by article 74 of Indian constitution. Then you have article 75, other provisions as to minister, what are the other provisions ministers do have, that is given by article 75. Article 76 talks about for uh, appointment of Attorney General of India. Now, who is Attorney General? Attorney General means the government lawyer actually. If, if anybody raises any case, any petition against government, then who would be the lawyer defending the case? It is the Attorney General of India and Constitution 76 article appoints Attorney General. Then Article 79, it talks about formation of parliament. That is, there would be a parliament and the parliament would be consisting of Rajya Sabha, Lok Sabha and President. It is given in Article 79. Article 80 talks about formation or composition of Rajya Sabha. That is, upper house of the parliament, Article 80. And then comes lower house. Article 81 talks about the formation of the lower house of the parliament. Then you have Article 84. Article 84. The uh, uh, Article 84 talks about the qualification for membership of Parliament. What are the qualifications required for membership of Parliament? That is given by Article 84. And the provisions are: he or she must be a citizen of India and makes and subscribe with some person authorized in that behalf by the Election Commission and oath or affirmation according to the form set out for the purpose of the third schedule of Indian constitution. So, these things you uh, you have to go through. I uh, will be explaining in some other video. So, for the timing you just understand article 84 says qualification of membership of parliament. Okay, article 87 that talks about the special address by president. So, what is special address? 
uh, at actually at the commencement of session of parliament that is the first session of the year and after the formation of new Lok Sabha the first session in these two cases the president gives a special address to the both houses of parliament and that is guaranteed by article 87 then you have article 88 that talks about rights of ministers and attorney general as respects of houses according to article 88 the attorney general of india and all the ministers they can attend any proceedings of parliament whether it is happening in Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha so article 88 gives them this power then I am going to article 99 that is the oath or affirmation by the members of parliament so article 99 you just write oaths and affirmation by the member of parliament then you have article 108 that is the joint sitting of the parliament there is some provision of joint sitting of parliament in some certain cases and I will be explaining what are the cases later on but you just know it talks about the joint sitting of the parliament then you have article 109 that talks about the procedure in respect of money bill so money bill is article 109 article 110 talks about gives the definition of the money bill and then article 111 is sent to bills so when the bill is passed by both houses of parliament it goes to president and president gives assent or not everything is given in this article article 112 talks about annual financial statement in general term which we call budget that is given by article 112 uh, there is nothing uh, well, there is nothing called budget in the constitution we generally use the term budget but the budget word is not there in constitution this is called annual financial statement then you have article 120 that talks about the languages that can be used in parliament it says that the main language would be Hindi or English but you can speak in your mother tongue also if you are not capable enough to express yourself in Hindi in either Hindi or English then you can get a permission from the chairman of the house or the speaker of the house and you can proceed in your mother tongue that is given by article 120 then you have article 122 that says courts not inquire into proceedings of parliament that means whatever happening in the parliament whatever laws we are making whatever amendment we are doing we have court cannot interfere in these matters so this is given this is granted by article 122 of indian constitution okay till this point we were talking about union that is the central government now from article 153 we will be talking about state government so article 153 says about governor of state so like uh, you have a president in case of central government government of india union uh, so like you have a governor in case of state and the governor would be the head of the state okay, then article 154 that talks about the executive power of state then we have article 157 as an important one it it uh, talks about the qualification for appointment as governor what should be the qualification so it is written in the constitution no person shall be eligible for appointment as governor unless he is a citizen of india and has completed the age of 35 years that means for governor this is the article gives the qualification and the qualification is you have to be citizen of india and you have to complete the age of 35 that's all then article 59 it talks about the oath and affirmation of the go governor so whoever is coming in the parliament whether he is a member of parliament president of india vice president of india, everybody has to take oath or affirmation and uh, article 159 talks about the affirmation or oath by governor then we have article 161 it talks about the power of governor to grant pardons like we had in case of central government in, uh, in case of central government we had President, President has some pardoning power, likewise uh, Governor also has some pardoning power. 
article 162 talks about extent of executive power of state then article 163 council of ministers to aid and advise governor as we have uh, seen in case of central government there were uh, cabinet ministers to aid president in the, here also in state government we have ministers state ministers uh, the person uh, those uh, ministers would be helping or assisting govern governor to run the state then article 165 it talks about advocate general for state like we had article 76 attorney general of india likewise article 165 we have one advocate general for the state the same post 76 attorney general for central government 165 for state government advocate general then we have article 168 constitution of legislatures in state like we had rajya sabha and lok sabha article 80 article 81 in case of union here we have article 168 to form constitution uh, sorry uh, legislature of states then we have article 169 it says you can either abolish or create leg state council of state that means uh, legislative council basically you have two provisions in in your state government you can have bicameral legislature or unicameral legislature what is bicameral legislature bicameral legislature means you have two houses of state like you have two houses of parliament in central government union you can have two houses in case of states also so if you have two houses then that is called bicameral and if you have a single then it should be ma it should be state legislature then it is called unicameral in case of west bengal we have unicameral legislature and it is the article 169 that allows you to abolish legislative council or create legislative council okay then we go to article 75 article 75 talks about Yeah, Article seventy five talks about right of governor to address and send messages to the house or houses. So both the house, like if you have two houses, uh, your uh, state le- in in state legislature, if you have two houses, that is your legislative council and legislative assembly, then governor can send messages to both the houses. If you have unicameral, then governor can send messages to your legislature. and that is given by article 175 of indian constitution so those were all about important articles up to 175 so my point is you should know you should remember all the articles properly each and every article which i have mentioned here you have to remember because those are very important question may be asked from these articles and once you are done with this then you go through in- individual articles and you can try to develop more knowledge okay so i'll be explaining all the articles in some other videos as time progresses but for the time being i request you to subscribe to my channel and uh, get yeah, and also go through the videos multiple times so that you can understand the things i want to convey and also kindly share this video so that maximum people get benefit out of it and if anybody is interested to work with me they can also write me emails and uh, because we are looking for people who can make videos thank you very much